back to The Late Show. Folks, my first guest tonight is a California congressman who serves as chairman of the House Intelligence Committee and is currently leading the committee's impeachment investigation. Please welcome to The Late Show, Congressman Adam Schiff. <laughs> Thank you uh, for making the time to be here at uh, what I have to imagine is a very busy time for you, and not just because it's the holiday season. <laughs> yes. Um, I have here uh, a copy of uh, the articles of impeachment uh, that Congressman Nadler um, has drawn up in the Judiciary Committee. You did a very good job um, in uh, the closing of the Intelligence Committee's uh, investigations a couple weeks ago. <laughs> And a lot of people on the other side of the aisle from you want to make this seem confusing. Can you explain in the simplest way possible what these articles of impeachment are about? Thank you. Uh, absolutely. And there are two articles. The first uh, is the president's misconduct regarding Ukraine. Uh, the president essentially tried to shake down the leader of another country by withholding hundreds of millions of dollars of military assistance to a nation at war with Russia, uh, in which Ukrainians are dying every day, and did so uh, to coerce that country into helping his re-election campaign, helping him cheat in his re-election campaign by investigating and smearing his rival. Uh, that's the essence of Article One: the abuse of his office to coerce foreign interference in our election. Article Two is just as significant because it is the obstruction of Congress's investigation, the cover-up by the administration of that misconduct, if this president or any president can simply say to Congress, we will give you no witnesses, we will allow, allow no documents, no matter what subpoenas, what lawful process we receive, it'll mean that this president and a future president can be as corrupt, as negligent, malfeasant as they choose and without any accountability. So that's the heart of it. A shakedown of a foreign country to help his reelection and the cover-up of that shakedown. Um, the, the, the first one seems fairly easy to understand, even though I would say your, your, your opponents in the House want to make it uh, seem complicated or, or too hard for the American people to follow. Have you thought about using the little jingle that we use here at The Late Show <laughs> to explain how simple it is? Are you familiar with the jingle? I am familiar with the jingle. Let's remind them of the jingle. John? There's just one thing that you need to know. Trump said do us a favor. We're well, happy to send you a recording of that to play at your next hearing. Um, I think we're going to pass on the song, but thank you for the offer. You're welcome. Okay. Because that, to me, that, you know, that phone call is not everything. And correct me if I'm wrong. That is, in itself, the uh, hot, glowing red doorway that you looked at and went, I think there's a fire behind that door. And when you open it up, Everyone is a fireman setting fires. Giuliani is throwing gasoline on everything. His cronies, Lev Parnas, Igor Fruman, um, uh, perhaps Mike Pence, Mike Pompeo knew. Everybody knew that this effort to uh, smear the uh, ambassador and to try to dig up dirt or generate dirt on Joe Biden was happening. It's not just the phone call. Well, that's exactly right. And, you know, some of the Republicans would like to say, uh, the president as well, well, it's just about a phone call. Is this, you know, are you really going to impeach the president around a phone call? It is, of course, much more. That phone call was merely one of the dramatic incidents uh, in a months-long scheme by the president to coerce this ally into doing his dirty work mm -hmm. to help his reelection. Um, it began with the firing of this ambassador. It continued uh, long after she was smeared and recalled by putting in place uh, this other irregular channel of people, the Sondlins, the Volkers, the Perrys, and others, the Three Amigos, uh, working with Rudy Giuliani, Rudy Giuliani to try to um, get them to make these announcements of these investigations into Biden uh, and this bogus conspiracy theory about the 2016 election. And, and what's significant here, Stephen, is the president didn't even care where the investigation got done. He just wanted it announced so that Biden's name would be smeared. Uh, that was what he wanted. And he was willing to sacrifice our national security, 
withhold military aid to a nation that is fighting our fight, uh, fighting against Russian expansionism, fighting for its own democracy, willing to do that to help his reelection campaign. So there's a lot at stake here. Americans may say, you know, why should we care about Ukraine? Well, first of all, we should care about an ally, but this is really about our own national security. Uh, it's about whether we can expect our own president to be looking out for us uh, rather than his own reelection uh, and sacrificing our security for his political purposes. It's about us. It's about our Constitution. It's about our expectation for what a president of the United States should do. Uh, and the founders, you know, I have to say there were three things they were concerned about, and they're all present here. They were concerned that an unethical person would become president and abuse their power. Hold they're on. Check. Check. <laughs> they were concerned that that unethical president would seek to have a foreign power interfere in our affairs. <laughs> and they were concerned that they would do so in the context of an election, try to prejudice an election. So you have all of these... <laughs> Well, let me ask about the Senate, if you don't mind. Yeah. Let me, let me yeah, go, yeah. go ahead to the Senate. So, uh, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, if, uh, if the articles, which are still being debated as we speak, I think, uh, in the House and Judiciary Committee, if they get voted on next week and, and the House votes to impeach, the entire House votes to impeach, the majority, then it goes to the Senate. Evidently, the word is that there, there's, a, as I said in the monologue, uh, there's speculation that it would be a two-week trial in the Senate with no witnesses. What kind of trial has no witnesses? Well, uh, apparently the kind of trial Mitch McConnell may want to have. So in the Senate, the senators are going to have to decide. Do they want to hear from people like Bolton and Mulvaney? Uh, or are they simply going to say, we don't want to know anymore because the truth we've already seen is damning enough. It's already hard enough for us to justify to the country why a president who would do such things should remain in office we don't want to see or know anymore. It's see no evil, hear no evil, do a lot of evil, uh, seems to be the philosophy. Um, Congressman, we have to take a little bit of a break to pay the bills, uh, but stick around. When we come back, I'll ask the Congressman the other people who he'd like to talk to who have not responded to their subpoenas. Stick around.